Dice Crew, keeping it a binge, and I'm getting back with y'all. Now, I know y'all probably caught the video I dropped yesterday, pretending to 600, going off on Spider Loke on behalf of WAC 100. And then we got Spider Loke responding. So let's hear what Spider Loke got to say. I'm going to keep it a binge for y'all doing my reaction. Y'all keep it a binge for me in the comments. Shout out to the Dice Crew. Let's rock. See y'all in here. How they say it, we got content. We got content. My initial reaction to this buffoonery of a warning directed to none other than the fucking Loke himself. Imagine that. And you know, I had to tune in with this because I know it was funny from the get go. Like, I know for a fact that Spider Loke ain't gonna never let go of his problem with WAP. Maybe the future, they could come to a conclusion. I don't know. But I know for the most part, I just know that no matter what goes on, Spider Lope right now ain't trying to let up off of his issue with WAC 100. Got a warning toward the Lope. Imagine that. My first response took place last night on Damu Keyway Conversation on Clubhouse. Shout out to Yael Ducems, Messi, Bomani, Dice, the whole squad, Ty Girl Shay. We was in there last night. It's the first time I got my opportunity to actually hear the audio connected to the video that Christopher Lovejoy recorded and put my name in the title as some sort of warning. I has, it had been sent to me multiple times. I was not going to listen to it. I was going to react to it and just say, fuck your warning without, re without hearing it or watching it. However... When I was in the, con um, I pulled up last night to my clubhouse click, and they reacted to it. They played it. So I got to actually hear what he said. And then, not only did I get to hear what he said, I was told that at the beginning of a video, he was click clacking. Click, click clack, click clack. You know, he was click clacking. A firearm. Now, I want to point this out, you know. I definitely can't understand that somebody can choose to take that serious. I feel like anytime you kind of plan like that or putting that type of energy out there, somebody should definitely take that serious. But on the other hand, I feel like, you know, 600 is just being very intelligent with creating this type of shock jock type content. Because, I mean, I don't think he, he, he pretty much know like, he know, like, if he going to try to really have a problem with Spider Low in the streets, the law enforcement will be all over that. And, you know, they'll grab him up even if he let, even they let him go and he don't get caught up because he didn't do it or anything like that. He know it'll just be a waste of time and he'll have to deal with that hassle. So I think he definitely was just, you know, um, trying to put out some great content. However, I'm not taking that away from anytime you play with stuff like that. People definitely got the right to take it serious. All threats got to get taken serious at some type of point. And, you know, obviously, you know, Spider Low ain't really playing with that type of side of the content. Presumably a registered firearm. He's click clacking the fire on. And then he issued a warning toward me. And I heard him click clacking a fire on. Presumably a registered firearm. He was click clacking the fire on. And then he issued a warning toward me. And I heard him say something like, oh, multiple times. Hold up, let me do this. <laughs> multiple times he's heard me refer to Her No Honey as CS2 back. Cash Jones is who we're referring to. And he says, this is a warning. If he doesn't do it one more time, he's going in or it's going up, and he's going in and he's not stopping, and it's going to affect all those around me. Some old corny ass shit could have said, right? So he has taken issue with the fact that I have referred to Ho No Honey as CS2 back. Outside of the fact that it's confirmed when he found the little black box up under his diesel, he immediately called 911. He thought it was a bomb. It was a tracking device. <laughs> so beside that, CS2 Bat has gotten an 11-minute documentary removed from World Star Hip Hop that proved, showed, highlighted, acknowledged that he was CS2 back in the Main Street case. And it was up for about two or three days and had um, amassed, acquired approximately three or four million views. And he got that taken down 
which was the main source of exposure. But if you still would like to see that content, you can go find it over at Active Chuck's YouTube channel. However, with any confusion associated with anybody that might not be able to connect the dots between Wacko No Honey, Cash Jones, and CS2 back, it might be complicated for some. I won't lie. It took me a minute to kind of see it. I had to see the content over and over again. However, I have actually seen a very large por portion of the wiretap associated with the Main Street case. On my dead homies, daughters, loves, loved ones, everything I love and live for. This is one small portion of it here on the screen. Now listen, I ain't sat down and ran and read or skimmed through no type of paperwork or nothing pretending to whack. I don't know what's true or not. So I'm not doing no throwing jackets on nobody. I'm not defending nobody. But it does sound like Spider Lowe definitely got the confirmation in his heart that he truly believes that WAC 100 is a snitch. And I also want to say, you know, at times I'll be saying like Spider Lowe might as well just get in with WAC. But if he truly feel like WAC is not in good standards, then, you know, he don't have to treat, give him a fair fade at all. You know what I mean? And, you know, if, you know, if, if this is true, then it's going to be more and more and more stuff to come and hit the surface in the future. It ain't going to just stop right here. So we just got to continue to stay tuned in, Dice Crew. You see Cash Jones' name highlighted twice. It because, you know, Wack is a business and he could just get something like that removed on behalf of it being like a blemish on his business and people might not want to engage with him and do business with him behind that type of um image that is being painted about him whether it's true or not i don't know but it's kind of the same thing big U just did you know he just served no jumper in them a video a, a, a paper so they can remove a video with all these type of claims about him because it's just not really a good look for his image and his brand. So I get it on the on the business side. I get it on the safety side. Because you know these remarks on like from what White, uh, Spider Loke just said about the War Store video about Wack. And the No Jumper video of Big U. Those things can get somebody hurt in these streets as well. So I get at it. I, I mean so I get it on behalf of. Not um, by protecting your image, your business, and also trying to protect your safety. It's in there upwards of 10 or 15 times from what I have observed thus far. But this is just a small example of Ho No Honey lying about his name being anywhere in the Main Street case. But anyway, he taking issue with me, allegedly, apparently, for lying on Ho No Honey. Imagine that when the only reason I ever spoke Ho No Honey name upon this internet is because he blatantly told a lie upon me. Not only did he lie on me once, he's lied on me on numerous occasions. I'll try to just ramble off a few. The initial first most flagrant lie was that I was somewhere at some location with him, Game, Mob Deep, 40 Glock, Should Knight, 50 Cent, and some other individuals. I was allegedly attempting to press game um for some reason i was delayed enough time for him to get a phone call convinced Shug to, to respond with him when he really didn't want to did he got there he talked me out of it told me something about g unit crib batteries on my back 50 cent in game going head up all this bullshit that never took place that was the and see this is one thing i can say right for a lot of us even including like 600 we got to watch how we go about this whole situation pretending to whack 100 and spider low because it will seem like this issue has been going on for a while. You know, pretty much prior, way prior before 600 even chose to get in the bed with whack 100. You know, not making no funny jokes when I use those terms. But I'm just saying like 600 still got the right to ride with whoever he feel like he riding with. You know, like he said, Wack got his back. He got his back. So, hey, you know, that's how people be operating out here. Even if you meet a person yesterday. But I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, we really don't know what's the root of all these problems between spider Loke and Wack. Because it's been going on so long and it's been privy to, I mean, it ain't been like the root of it ain't really, I don't think everybody's privy to it. But other people might not even care about the root of the problem. 
first lie that gave him opportunity to clarify. He never did. So I'm from neighborhood Crip. 600, I assumed, was from neighborhood Crip. So first and foremost, all this back and forth started because the wannabe Paru nigga, or used to be kind of like Paru nigga, lied on the low. Yo, neighborhood stuff. This is how it's all started. But you in search us then, just didn't notice this. Out of nowhere, here come this big old goofy motherfucker on the internet trolling. Initially, he, he, he looked and smelled just like he does and did to all y'all. I seen it. Behind the scenes, I'm tapping in with a few of my homies from 600. Like, what's up with Cubs? They, I told 600 this on Facts over Phillips, the podcast to his face. Y'all can go watch it. I wasn't as in much detail, but go watch the episode. I told him, I said, when you first hit the scene, a lot of shit you was doing, I didn't understand. So I'm getting at the six. I was like, what's up with cuz? And they was like, that's the homie. Certain ones. So therefore. Now I want to just, you know, speak on that little part right there that Spider Lowe said. Because, you know, when I speak on 600 in videos, it's always somebody in the comments talking about uh, he's just not from 60s. And it's like. At some point, he got to be from 60s at some degree because why would Big U be hanging with him and having him all in the 60s and let him throw up these gang signs around him? Because if that's not the truth, then Big U is wrong for that. But I want to point out that Spider Loke definitely said that certain people from 60s said that 600 was from 60s. Or I also let him know, after a while... Some of them same people was like, damn, I regret vouching for them. But therein lies the connection and communication you see me maintain with 600 throughout these months, a year, whatever it is, how long it's been. I maintain a rapport with him based on because they never violated me. I see him do a whole lot of goofy shit, but guess what? I knew some reputable 600s that told me, I mean, six O's that said he don't me. Uh, Ron Ron came on Facts with Phyllis. Classify him as the homie. I've seen him on social media with Big U. They say he the homie. Now, I understand there's levels and status and layers of homies. And it's not on me to treat him like anything other than a 6-0 based upon our interactions. I didn't have no whole bunch of heavy interactions with him. I knew he was sitting next to the biggest hoe on the internet. That had lied on me. That also said at one point, all he gonna do is go start a war with his homies like he did last time. I have never, ever, 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 ever had nor started or participated in a war with my homies. That's another blatant lie. Hold no honey told on me. Why you defending alleged lies against this whole ass nigga? Wow. You know how many people been motivating me? To cease communicating and having a connection with 600. And I didn't give a fuck what they was talking about. What they was talking about. Six O's. Harlem's. Damu's. Some of his homies. On my bumper like, fuck her. Why you fuck with cuz? None of that pressure mattered to me. That's the homie. You can go all on... Clubhouse, go look, listen to the replay, Domo Keyways conversations. How many times niggas try to put me on the spot about being associated with 600? And my bottom line is that's the homie from Neighborhood Crip. I always left that be the bottom line. If I'm lying, I'm dying on my mama, mama, dead homies, daughters, lokes, loved ones, everything I love and live for, my sister and my sons. I've avoided any type of conflict or miscommunication with him intentionally on purpose. For multiple reasons, because I do play chess in the way I think about everything I do. You dig a lies? So, cuz, and I have also had slight miscommunications and a whole lot of communications off the scenes where we come to an understanding. So, first and foremost, I don't know what made the nigga do some goofy shit like a warning shot versus if you really had something you thought had some importance to speak to me, why you didn't tap in and holler like we done tons of See, that's why I said that I think 600 is definitely just using the internet and creating content. And he just, you know, doing what he doing on this internet. Because I feel like if it was that serious, he definitely could have got that spider love directly.
Uh, I know, because you goofy, cuz. Well, Yayo Carly, you a goofologist. The master of goofology. I've heard a plethora of unpleasing things about this dude that I have chosen not to share. Just keep it to myself. <laughs> warning shot. Imagine that. A fuck a warning shot, nigga. Fuck CS2 back, hold no honey. <laughs> and his brother. Shout out Leroy Smith, the loke. <laughs> Dead homies, daughters. I can't believe it. Uh, it's only so much you get. I just, I just, I, I would love because you know I'm only doing this because I'm so eager, so anxious, so excited, so exuberantly awaiting. You heard all those as vowels, no consonants. All those words started with vowels. Words are difficult, but you check me out, trap. <laughs> Rich Trapper. Hey, I am just elated at the opportunity to hear whatever the f he think he got to say towards me about me that he considers a warning. Let me tell you something about my public presence upon this internet. There is absolutely nothing about me that is factual. I give a f being revealed about me. Dead homies. So, hey, shoot away. Now, if you lie, like, hold no, honey, and loose coochie lips cannon, another nigga you keep company with that the only reason I speak upon him on this internet because he chose to open up his mouth and blatantly lie on me. And you the defender of lies against men? And you choose to protect hold no, honey? You choose to use your defense of lies to support hold no, honey? When your two partners hold no, honey, and loose coochie lips cannon? Both lied on me. Man, your logic is imbalanced, bro. I don't know who the fuck you thought I was or who you think you talking to. You should have swallowed that warning shot like you swallow whole no honey dick. Give a fuck about no warning shot, nigga. On the east side, we don't do warning shots, nigga. We just get off, nigga. I mean, uh, it seems like to me that Spider Loke is very upset. Yo, cripping hella corny, nigga. I just... Didn't stand in judgment, bro. But since you want to speak uh, loosely about my name, nigga, fuck a warning shot, nigga. It's up. It's on, nigga. It's shoot your shot, nigga. You the corniest crip known to the internet, bro. On my mama mama. And that's just like really right now scanning the whole. You and Loose Coochie. You and Loose Coochie Lips Cannon is the corniest crip. But see, that's why I always say if you don't want to really, like, if you really ain't going to vouch for a person and got that relationship and that dialogue and that uh, uh, whatever it may be, do not get out here and try to act like y'all cool. Because now it just look kind of strange on behalf of Spider. Like, you calling him one of the most corny crips on the internet because you been peeping everything that's corny to you. So you should have been removed yourself from just being so tied into him so you didn't have to come out in the future and now you exposing so much stuff. But now it's looking at it like, you know, you didn't have a problem with him being the corniest crip on the Internet yesterday. But now that he called you out, now you got a problem with him and you saying all these things. It's kind of like the whole Brick Baby and Crib Max situation. You know, we got to stop that. Don't just try to be cool and tight with a person just because what group they belong to, what gang or whatever that may be. If it ain't no real relationship and no bond there for a person to really be able to vouch for that, then just stop playing them games. And I'm not saying that just on this topic. I'm speaking on this just in general for everybody because a lot of people be having that problem, you know, in the streets, on the Internet, whatever. I ain't gonna lie, you talking about niggas calling ho no honey, CS2 back, nigga on my granddaughter heartbeat. A nigga called me from prison through a third party and said, hey, I see what y'all doing with Christopher Lloyd George. I know what's going on. I see what's going on. Leave that nigga alone, that Sheriff Baca boy. On my mama mama, nigga. Eastside Crip. And you know you be over there boxing with the sheriffs and comping. Dead homies. So I don't know how deep that go, but it's coming from inside behind the walls that motherfuckers better leave you alone before they get crossed up because you Sheriff Baca boy. What you know about that? Hmm. Just one of the few things that's been come across my table that I've kept to myself. 
because I did not want to engage in assassinating your character. But since you want to jump your big ass goofy, big old goofy ass in the way, you can get it too, nigga. You are officially amongst the group of the rejects, nigga. You thought I didn't know? Just wasn't none of my, none of my business. You know how many goofy homies I got? They usually stay in their place. And you stayed in your place for the most part, according to me. Now you just stepped out of place, got out of line. You letting your little internet presence get to your head. Like you really somebody out here. When I am literally the motherfucking low, nigga. And you ain't got to ask nobody. You know this. You, on the other hand, are a major mystery out here, nigga. Dead homies. You might as well go, get, go in that hotel room. You tried to clown big you. You said y'all was somewhere on the road in the hotel. And you came in the room and you seen him in his hotel room, laying on his belly with his uh, laptop, fully clothed. Kind of kicking his feet, listening to R&B. And you tried to clown him like that was goofy. But the whole world seen ho no honey in the hotel room with his ass out, oiled up, dangling his feet, belly on the motherfucking mattress, talking to a man in his falsetto voice, whispering on Clubhouse in the wee wee hours of the morning. And you cool with that. <laughs> Ah, it's crazy because he tried to get on Big U head about fucking with rats and sex offenders. He said he don't fuck with nobody that fuck with rats and sex offenders. Makes you a buster. Get you folded off the island. Use a mark. However, not only did Ho No Hunted save, attempt to save Takuchi character, he escorted him through podcasts, helped him get deals done, a bona fide rat. Sat right next to him, held his hand, and he on R. Kelly nuts. And like you told me, which I got the screenshot, you know R. Kelly is a sex offender. So your logic is, your contradictions are blatant, and your logic is irrationally out of, out of, out of, out of, out of accordance with anything that you're actually claiming to represent, nigga. You fuck with a nigga that fuck with rats and, uh, and sex offenders. Nigga, R. Kelly is the ultimate sex offender. And Ho No Hunter is such a groupie, he can't wait to show the world he can get on the phone and talk to a sex offender. He finally got his opportunity to, to talk to Hassandra, somebody he know been bambada. And he couldn't wait to tell him about the gay sex tape that he watched the hundred times. It's what he want to talk about. Talk to Talk, talk about to men that he knows have enjoyed and experienced man-on-man -man relations. Imagine all the things Ho No Honey could have told Hassandra when he got on the phone with Hassandra, but he want to tell him, like, hey, I know about a secret gay tape of one of the biggest rappers in the world. I watched it a hundred times. Them the type of niggas you fuck with, nigga. Fuck you talking to a warning shot. Neighborhood Nina from the nine, East the Deal, low six nine seven ECIP to the homegirl Crip Jackie. Oh my, 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 these niggas goofy, cuz. <laughs> wow, I be, I did not want to, I never wanted to talk about the six hundred that I actually see. I'm trying to, you know, practice discipline. Ain't got to get on everybody. Just like I never got on Milk Seven Four. I haven't approved of a million things I see Milk Seven Four. Ninety seven percent of them, but ask Nina boy. I just avoided it intentionally. 600, I don't agree with 97% of the things I did. I see him do. But I just avoided speaking on it intentionally. But just imagine begging a nigga to shit on you. Cause, cause just beg me to shit on you. I'm talking about the day before. The day before, nigga. Oh, my mama, mama, nigga. The day before. The day before, nigga. My little internet click. Brought me to a meeting, nigga, because I was cool with 600. Could have easily, the pressure they put on me, the points they made, I could have easily been like, all right, you right, fuck that nigga. I'm going to quit hollering at him. I feel y'all. Nigga, I went back against the wall for 600. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Dead homies. Told them, I've been pushing with him like this. I'm going to keep pushing with him like this because of Crip. Got a gang of witnesses. 
Deuce M, Jael. Them only two that really be putting their name out in the public. So I ain't going to throw nobody else's name in there. But when they choose to go public and say they was a part of it, they'll let y'all know. <laughs> my mama, mama was on my head, on my helmet for being cool with 600. And I barked on them. Basically made them bow their position down. Told them this song got it cracked with 600. It's going to be like that. And the very next day, I had to look at them like, wow, 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 wow. All they did was put that video in the same group chat. Because it started from a group chat of them chastising, checking me on my connection and communication with 600. Like they not feeling it. So now I'm going back and forth. And that's getting so motherfucking, you know, typing too much. I called one member. We ended up on a conference. And we politicking this shit. <clears throat> so after they allowed me to win and, and maintain my position, like that's the homie for whatever reasons that I ain't finna explain at all, but I made it simple because we was on the yard, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. And they finally had to agree. And the very next day, bro, they just put that video, him with the warning shots in the chat. I couldn't believe it. And I still refused to watch it, cuz. I didn't watch it. I didn't listen to it. I was just gonna respond. Trap news. What it do? Cuz I was just gonna respond based on the title. And I was gonna be a lot more cordial and political or cool about it. But fucking with the homies. Damu Keyway conversations on Clubhouse. Go follow up. Tap in. I was in the clubhouse with the click. And they usually react to content of this nature. It wasn't like far fetched out they way to like bring this up. It was just my turn. Especially based on the politic that we had the day before, the way they sided with me in my position, the very next day, that was perfect content according to the type of content we typically run in the room. That was perfect content to run in the room and to basically put me on the spot. I had to listen to it. And this is my natural reaction to that bullshit he said. He said some bullshit. And I've been maintaining coolness with him under enormous pressure. Not that I felt pressure, like, oh, should I fold? But I'm talking about the presentation or people presenting. And it now, you know, to me, it seemed like Spider Loke is pretty much going to just keep stretching the fact that, you know, he didn't want to really go hard on 600. And, you know, he obviously got to go hard on him now, you know, so... For the most part, I think we didn't cover the whole main reaction. I mean, the whole response from Spider Low. So y'all can go over there to Spider Low channel if y'all want to like just tune in with the whole shebang. But I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Shout out to the Dice Crew. Y'all keep it a Benji for me in the comments. Let me know y'all thoughts on everything. You know, 600, WAC 100, Spider Low. Y'all let me know how y'all feel. And I'll join y'all in the comments. I'm out.